Do you know that Lagos is not the only city in Nigeria with a beach? And that there is a city that has the highest number of islands and beaches in Nigeria? Here is the story of a paradise city that only a few people know about. A city with a rich culture, cuisine, history and beauty. This is Akwaibo, the land of promise, the paradise city of Nigeria. Akwaibom is a place in the south we've never been to. With no directions whatsoever, we got on a road relying solely on Google Map to get us to the city. One of the things we discovered when we got to Akwaibom was the beautiful clean roads. It is said that the city is one of the cleanest cities in Nigeria, which we can attest to with one of the best road network within and outside the state capital. The first place we visited was the Ibom Plaza. It is a place located in the heart of Iyo, and we're told that this is a connection hub to different parts of the city, as you can get to any part of the city from here. It is also a huge sitting or resting place where people traveling from far can sit, rest and eat before they continue on their journeys. The Ibom Plaza, you know, it's the central point yeah. where you have everything. Like you have everything because if you're coming from another local government or if you're traveling in to Akwa Ibom, yeah. you just don't need to worry too much. You yeah. just come here, sit here then call someone to come pick you up. Oh, I'm oh. at Ibom Plaza. You know, while you're waiting, you, you want to chill out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you want to chill exactly. out. So that's why you have, uh, you know, cool shops like restaurants to, to you know, to okay. feed you up. Then and also to take a cool drink okay. too. So let me say it's almost everywhere here. Okay. You likely find it everywhere. From here, we then visited the home of the Nigerian Super Eagles, a beautiful stadium built in the replica of Allianz Arena here in Uyo, called the Goswil Apabio International Olympic Stadium. We learned that the stadium can seat about 30,000 people, and it is said that any time the Nigerian Super Eagles play here, they always win. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Is it not the Allianz Arena? Uh, actually, it is not. It is something that is built, a replica of the Allianz Arena here in Uyo, the capital city of Akwa Ibom. It is called the Goswil Apabio International Olympic Stadium, you know. It is built to replicate what they have there, and it is massive. It is the home of the Nigerian Super Eagles. And anytime they play here, they win. And guess what? <laughs> they didn't play here recently. <laughs> this stadium has been bringing Nigerian Super Eagles good luck for a long time. And sometimes you may wonder, why is it not Lagos or Abuja? Why Akwaibon? I think because they know this place is our, our lucky charm and that is why they made this place the home of the Super Eagles. Another wonderful site in Uyo is the Ibom Icon Hotel and Resort. It is a hotel with one of the most beautiful views I have seen with lush, well-maintained landscape. In this hotel, one can engage in a variety of different activities like swimming, biking and touring. The hotel is said to be sitting on one of the Nigerian many history as we were shown one of the early slave trade boats used for ferrying people out of the country. You said this boat was for? For slave trade. Or during the slave trade, this was the boat? Those notes is what they use in turning them. To okay. And here is the name of the shipbuilder. As the Cream Bloods and Sons Limited shipbuilders. Okay. Not with Cheshire. Okay. So this boat here is the one they use in converting them from this place to the high sea. Because okay. the ship cannot come here. Okay. So they will use this one to convert them from here to the high sea. When they get to the high sea, 
will now transfer them to either ship or any wow. other means and take them off Nigeria. Okay, they don't come yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, so that water will drain. They discovered this boat here 15 years ago. Yes, when they were walking here. Akwa Ebom is a city with a rich history of the early Nigerian struggle as a result of slave trade. This is a city that will enlighten you of the dark history of Nigerians and our victories alike. We set out to explore the stories by visiting a few places. One of the places we visited was the Women's War Memorial Museum in Korek Bene. Here we learned of the women's revolt leading to the first female war. We then visited the residence of Lord Lugard and his official workplace. So, uh, we just saw the Lord Lugard building. Uh, over 100 years old now and the sad thing is I think it's supposed to be more maintained or kept better than this but I, I just think they just left it to die because look at the roof man this 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 should be taken care of properly this should be taken care of properly really I personally think this place should be preserved better than what it is right now guys what do you think if you've watched this video thus far Please, what are you waiting for? Give this video a like and subscribe to this channel. After that, we visited the place of no return where we were given the tales of how slaves who have been made to cross a bridge can never return back to their homes or family forever. It was indeed a sad tale. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. The white men came with it and they abandoned it. Wow. The chain here was connected to a stern. You okay. see, there was a stern used to weigh the steps. Even though the tales of our history is a sad one, the city of Uyo gives you peace in its many beautiful sceneries, such as the beautiful Green Lake. Okay, here's what I think about having green waters like this. Based on the experience I've had, seeing the ones that happen in the Plateau State, is that uh, when people uh, extract minerals from the earth, right, the, t the tendency to have some kind of minerals left on the ground, this thing changes the color of the water because I've seen this in Plateau State and I think it is the same thing that applies here. It was as a result of exploring such beauties that we discovered the many beaches in Akwaibom. We learned of the famous Ibeno beach that many people who visit Akwaibom go to. But we were also told of the unexplored, unknown beach in Akwaibom called the Kashu beach. To get here, we travel many kilometers to this town. All right, we have a low tide here. We are at... Uh, uh, What's the name of this place again? Something West eh? What? Eastern Obono. Uh, it took Obolo, Eastern Obolo. It took us like uh, an hour and a half to get here from Uyo. And uh, we're actually going to an island, which is some this eh? Emeruke Island. So we're going to get a boat, get to the island and see the beach that is there, because that's the reason why we actually came and we were ferried across the river to get to this magnificent island, which is the unexplored Cashew Beach. One of the things that is a bit of a concern to me 
is the many beaches of Akwa Ibom and why the average Nigeria only knows of the Lagos beach as the only beach in Nigeria. Visiting this beach, you could see that it is untouched, unexplored and unharnessed. And I wonder why this is so. Why the tourism potential of these places in Nigeria are left untouched and untapped? A lot of Nigerians go to different countries to visit places like this. But we have them here, but with no publicity whatsoever. Walking on the beach was like paradise with fresh sands and sparkling water. I do feel this place should be open to investors and people should come and invest here as it will be easier for tourists who want to vacate here to spend the night here if a hotel and other business hubs were built here. From my exploration of Akwa Ibom, I can see that the state has so much to offer even though the country itself is not pushing tourism in the right direction. The state can do more to encourage tourists to come, sort of places so people can come and explore the things that the state has to offer. And I believe this will encourage other, others in discovering the benefits of improving tourism in their own various states and the country at large. Okay, here's the thing. Um, before I came here, uh, there are, there's a factor that brought me here. One, I've heard about Ibeno Beach. Uh, they call uh, Ibno Beach here. They call, that's how the locals call it, Ibno Beach. But we all call it Ibeno Beach. And uh, it's one of the longest beach here in Nigeria without any, any, <laughs> when I say without, any investment that has been done on the ground. What I mean by that, they don't have a hotel, they don't have anything like a, a, a resort or something that will attract people or keep people there, you know. So, uh, this morning we talked about coming here, uh, coming, going to the Beno Beach, but the guy told us that there is another beach, which is this, they call it the Cashew Beach. I don't know what name it has really. He said that, that on this beach, that People hardly come to explore the beach. People just, the place is empty, unexplored. And as a matter of fact, if you can see, look around me, let me show you. You can see all the way like that, all the way. See the water just got to my feet now. Uh, all the way, that way, and that way. There is not, not even a store where anything is sold. You know, because for you to get to this place, for you to get to this place, you have to like get on a boat, bring you to this uh, island. You have to cross a river, which we did just now. And it just tells me that there is so much potential that can be harnessed, so much in this country that can still be done, especially this state. And I can only, only imagine the potential that it brings to the economy of this place. So massive. Just think about people building maybe some a resort like hotels in that area uh, so, may I just think about seeing the things you see on uh, seashells and all those places just think about it here it will be massive massive <laughs>